Okay, this is going to be a simple exercise to do and a little bit of introduction to another major tool, and this is masking. Um, let's see. I think the easiest way to explain this is like masking tape. So let's say you're going to paint a square or a rectangle like this. Okay, it's sort of easy to do, just sort of freehand it, right? And then you could come back with the eraser tool um, by selecting the eraser and um, cleaning up the edges and eventually you would come around to getting something you know, relatively reasonably rectangular. And you could do this for a while. Um, and that's all fine and dandy. But we could do a little bit better if we did something like had a piece of masking tape. So think of it this way, like if I select the background color, I take my eyedropper tool and select the background color, I could create a marquee shape, right? A rectangular marquee. And I could make myself a digital piece of masking tape using the bucket fill tool. And I could go around each side bucket filling the same color as the background and masking over this um, rectangle, right? And I would thereby, on layer two, have a perfect rectangular selection, right? And I could move that rectangular selection around and reposition it, okay? So that's the basic concept of masking. I take a color and put it over something else and it blocks it out. All right. Interesting thing I could do is I could reduce the opacity and I could have a partially transparent mask, um, which is kind of neat. Photoshop allows me to do that. The other thing that I can do is I can actually um, add a layer mask by clicking this little button over here, right? It's called add layer mask. And you'll see that it creates another little thing there. And it defaults my brush to being uh, a little black area. So if I hit the brush tool and I paint, I'm painting, notice that line showed up on the layer mask icon. I'm actually painting in masking tape. Then what's cool is if I want to move this layer, if I hit the move tool and I drag this layer around, the masking tape and the image go with it, which is cooler than masking tape, right? Masking tape stays, you know, stuck down to where it is. The other cool thing is, see this little um, chain link there? If I click that chain link, it turns off and I can then move the masking tape around, right? I think that's about the coolest thing ever, okay? So that is one way that I could mask. I can take my brush tool again, create any random shape. I could add a layer mask. I could change my brush to something textured. I could um, change my brush opacity up here and lower that down. And I could begin painting in the mask in the masking layer right there transparently and do a partial mask that's sort of faded. So I could keep this texture, not change anything under it, and I could reposition, move, or delete this masking layer later, right? So what's great about that is it doesn't change anything that's under it. And what's cooler than masking tape is I can do textures and transparency, which I can't normally do. Um, and I can lock that back if I want. Another simple tool that you need, that you'll need to, uh, to mask is, uh, or to use the idea of masking is this particular thing in Photoshop called um, uh, lock transparent pixels. 
see this little checkerboard pattern up here with the lock next to it? What that does is it locks the pixels in the layer that don't have anything on it. So I could take another brush, just a regular brush, hard drawn pressure size. Um, I can flip to a different color. And when I run my brush on here, it's only going to hit stuff that I've painted. So if I draw an object like a mountain and I only want to continue drawing in that mountain, I can quickly lock transparent pixels and I can modify the color without modifying the shape, which is super, super cool. I think of that as a masking technique because it's so similar. If I turn that off, you'll notice that I can draw outside of those pixels and outside of those shapes that shape. So that's uh, an interesting, interesting tool. Now, um, another thing that I have is I can draw a shape or scribble or whatever, right? Let's say I'm just building up textures, building up value. And, you know, I can turn this into something, right? Like I could turn this into a landscape, put mountains behind it. I could have this sketch going. This could be a bunch of trees. I could have a stream coming down or whatever. The other thing that I could do is I can hold control and click on that image and it selects everything in that layer. While it's selected, I could then go in and begin painting into it inside the selection and modifying the colors in there. I'm using that hard drawn pressure opacity brush so it's going to be very, very blended. And the opacity of the brush is turned down. So here I can turn that brush opacity back up and I really start putting that value down. The cool thing is I can go to select the inverse. So I have flipped my selection. So if I want to put in a sky, pick a more sky blue sky, I can go in on that same layer, start putting that in. And it's not really going to go into that selection. You'll see it does a little bit because it's a transparent thing, right? But it doesn't really affect that in any um, incredibly dramatic way. Um, okay, so let's turn that layer off. That was just a bad, uh, a bad drawing, but that's fine. Um, Let's see, so let's switch to a different brush. Let's do like the, the hard round pressure size brush, full pressure, right? Solid colors, hard edge, very perfect. Um, the other thing that I can create is what's called a quick mask and it's Q, um, the, the letter Q and you'll see how it turns red. So now what I can do is I can paint on top of that using that brush. Then if I hit Q again, it leaves me a little selection. So if I wanted to like paint a blue window with a little X in there and begin to um, modify that, I painted in that masking tape, so I get cloud reflections in the window, right? I can change my sky blue pattern. I can paint around it and I can put shadows in two parts of the window, right? I can put my green trees reflecting in there. I can put my um, 
nice warm colored windowsill at the bottom. Okay, and that doesn't affect anything. I should be able to select the inverse. No, I don't. And then when I deselect, I am left with that, which is kind of cool. It's quick mask. It doesn't really um, uh, change much of anything, right? Then what I could do is I could mask out those parts again. loosely, right? I could be very careful with this if I wanted to. Being very picky about the mask, but here I'm not paying, I'm not being super picky about it. Okay, hit Q again. So those areas are selected. So then I could go in and I could um, paint in around that. So this is just the idea of masking tape and what I, what I can, this idea that I select an area to not paint. And if I hit keep, keep hitting Q, I get that back while that selection is still there. If I, if I deselect it, if I go to select, deselect, right, or if I hit um, control D, uh, I'm done with the mask and I can't get that particular mask back. I can use a new quick mask, um, which is fine. So that's why it's a quick mask and not really like a full layer mask. So you have several ways to do masking. And what I would like you to do is try out um, at least three different ways to mask. You'll need to know all of them, right? And just to review, if you have quick mask, you have the idea that you hit control and select an area, um, right? You have your lock transparent pixels. You have your add a layer mask with a partially transparent overlay. You, and you have like a very hard overlay. And then of course you have, you know, uh, actually creating another layer over top of it and filling stuff in that layer. Here's a little masking trick with a little bit of an application here. Um, so what I want to do is pretend I'm a fashion designer and I want to get this pattern right here onto the red jacket here just to see what that would look like. Um, so what I, I don't want this part of the pattern. I don't want the, the background or anything. I just want the actual pattern, right? Just this part that I'm turning off and on. So if I select that layer, uh, hit Control A or select uh, all, that gives me a box around that whole layer and I can copy it with Control C and I can add a layer on this file and paste it. Um, and then I wanna hit Control T or edit transform and transform it down so it's a little smaller. I don't want, like that's too big of a pattern. Um, what I want to do probably is, is use it a bunch of times. So what I can do is transform it small, then I can, um, I can duplicate that layer a few times. So I'll have four of these. Then with the move tool, I can move them around such that they all line up. I don't want to select all of those layers. I want that layer. I want them all to line up with each other. There we go. So. Now, if they're all separate layers, that's kind of a pain. Um, so what I want to do is make sure I've got those four layers by turning them off and on. Easy way to do it. I can hold shift and select all those layers or hold control and select them individually. Then what I do is go to layer and merge them at the bottom or hit control E. Now, all those are operating as one layer. 
the goal is to get this onto that, that red layer. So I can turn that off just for clarity and I can use the magic wand tool right here and I can select these red areas because they're flat shapes and very graphic with hard edges that tool works very well. It gets everything in there. Um, so then I can go up to this layer and um, I can actually hit the uh, add layer mask and what's cool about that is it gives me a layer mask over that pattern but in the shape of the red thing which is like super super cool so then i can unlink them right and then i can take the move tool and move the pattern around behind this red garment and see where i like that pattern you know right now that pattern looks too big so i could hit transform on the pattern and i could transform the pattern smaller so that, that it looks much more interesting on the actual garment itself. So if I'm designing a garment, designing wallpaper, doing interior design, working with architecture or something like that, um, designing textiles, this is a super cool method uh, and application of masking um, that's a little more automated, a little more precise than uh, you know sort of hand painting stuff. Um, I like hand painting stuff because it's so direct and, and easy to think about but um, this one's a good one to have in your back pocket.